I can get my camera ready again. So do you have any questions for me before we start? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Parent Matters, the power of exposure. So thinking back to middle school and high school, um, if you played any sports then, what advice would you give to a young person who is balancing the athletics and their academics? And how did you maintain both? Yeah, when I was in middle school, that was when I first started getting into track. And so I joined a track team when I was in middle school. And so every day after school, um, we would have practice. And so it definitely was a lot to balance because I also wanted to make sure I stayed on top of all of my schoolwork and made sure I got good grades and, and everything. So I think that it was in middle school that I started to realize the importance of time management. Mm -hmm. And that just meant for me, like using my time um, creatively and effectively. Um, so I have always used weekends as kind of a way to recenter and prepare myself for the week ahead. So if on a Saturday, I knew in the week ahead, I would have like a lot of like track meets or practices or something. I would think about ways that I could get my school work done ahead of time, whether that was like doing it a day in advance or um, staying after class for a little bit and seeing if I could um, finish working on something. I, I think for me, it was always just making sure to stay on top of everything, know what I had to do and just have an idea of how much time I would have to allocate to get it done. Sometimes it did mean late nights, um, which I mean, isn't the most ideal situation. Um, but I think that I, as I got more used to having a busy schedule, I realized I didn't have to always stay up late just to get my work done. I could find time throughout the day to get it done, like by turning off my phone, putting it somewhere in the corner, not letting it distract me and just focusing on what I need to do. Mm, you said something really powerful turning off the phone. You, listen, even as adults, I take one day a week where for 12 hours, I just shut my phone off. And um, you have to. And, um, you know, I've often said this to parents. Um, we raised our kids really without cell phones. I think my, my oldest son was the first one to get one. And then the others were there at the store and like begging, like tears coming out of their eyes. But um, so they got theirs younger. But um we, you know, made it a point to plug them up at night in our room, you know, at like 930 at night, because I tell parents like kids don't really have the wherewithal to, you know, um, step away or disconnect or, you know, they're not that savvy and strong, disciplined yet, you know, so we have to kind of do it for them and help them. So um, I'm glad you say that. And, and you probably still have to do some of that, you know, now. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a big challenge for your generation. And, you know, so anytime I see you guys doing some wonderful stuff, it's like, poof, thank goodness they stepped away from the video games or the phones and it, there's a lot of distractions. And um, so it's, it's great that you're doing all that. So um, I'm glad you made those um, references to um, your parents kind of being there and supporting you and then the training wheels kind of you know, were taken off and then you kind of started going on your own. So in addition to sports, what are other programs or things were you exposed to when you were in, before you got to college? Um, yeah, it was definitely part of quite a few um, extracurricular activities before I got to college. The two biggest ones that had um, the most impact on my life were the youth chapter of the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. Um, we were called the Delta Gems. And also the National Association, um, uh, black women. National yeah. Coalition of 100 Black Women. Yeah. Um, sorry, I guess I haven't said that term in a long time. <laughs> um, but <laughs> those were the two organizations that made the most impact on my life. Um, we would have uh, monthly meetings, and they always revolved around something that helped us prepare for our future, whether we were meeting people who were um, excelling in whatever career they're in, um, or just giving us resume advice. It was just a way for me to gain a broader perspective of the world beyond just like the four walls of the school building. Right. Um, and 
I, I think that gave me the type of exposure that I needed. Um, it also introduced me to a lot of different scholarships and introduced me to um, different ways that I could pay for school. Mm -hmm. um, and so I am incredibly grateful to have been part of both Delta Gems and the National Coalition of 100 Black Women growing up. Um, and definitely credit that with a lot of my current success. No, those are great programs. You're right. And um, Role Model and um, Delta Gems have done phenomenal um, work in our community. And uh, so I'm glad you were a part of that. And I'm glad you're giving them their, their props because they're still going strong, doing their thing and actually helping my daughter um, as we speak. So I'm really excited about what they're doing. Um, so how did you decide on what college to go to? How did that happen? Um, it was a bit an interesting process for me. I think that in some ways I probably wasn't as, um, I didn't find ways to get as much guidance as I probably needed to. Um, I remember when I came down to like taking the SAT, I had one of my best friends who reminded me before like the deadline and, you know, if she hadn't reminded me, I don't know <laughs> what would have ended up happening. Um, but I, you know, by the time I got into my junior year and I was starting to seriously look at schools, mm -hmm. um, through a series of like talking to people who I knew, you know, whether my parents, it was my parents' friends who had older children who had gone through school and just talking to them about the schools they had gone to or learning more about the schools or go, going to the guidance counselor at my high school, at Tunic High School and just talking more about what opportunities I had, I began to have a broader idea of um, the different colleges that were available um, because I just really didn't know. And in fact, the reason why I even found out about Georgetown was because for spring break of my junior year, my aunt took us, uh, took me and my youngest brother on a trip to Washington DC. And we ended up visiting Georgetown while we were on that trip. And that's the only reason why I had heard about it. And so when it came down to apply to colleges, um, I was looking mostly at New Jersey schools because I love New Jersey and I assumed I was going to stay in state. But then I also remembered how much I loved my visit to Georgetown and realized that I should probably apply and just see what happens. Wow. And so um, when I applied, I was like really, really excited to get in. I don't think I realized at the time how great of a school it was. Yes. until I got accepted and starting, started to look more into it and got even more excited. And I knew that that was the school that I had to go to. Wow, that's awesome. That's pretty amazing. And you know, a lot of things you said are, are very important. So I consider your friend and uh, like a part of your family, like, um, you know, the village. And so sometimes, you know, there are people that are in place, like, you know, different mentor groups, et cetera, um, outside of our families that can help you know, promote and share information and that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, things happen and, and sometimes information isn't passed on. You know, guidance counselors, I think, do a great job, but they have such a huge caseload of getting information to so many young people that, you know, um, it's almost impossible. So, um, so I feel like the young people that are seeking information get it readily, but if you don't know that you're not even supposed to be seeking something, then it could, things could get missed. So thank goodness you made that SAT deadline and, and you know, went on to do some phenomenal things. So, um, and you're, you're one of the first people I know that wanted to stay in New Jersey. Most kids are like, I want to get <laughs> as far away from home as possible. <laughs> and I tell kids, I'm like, listen, your parents are not driving to Rutgers all the time to see you. So it's okay. <laughs> And they're probably happy you're walking out of the house too. So everybody needs a break. So um, that's good that, you know, and um, yeah, Georgetown, what a beautiful campus and so much history. And um, there's a lot of uh, uh, great stuff about, you know, um, the school. Now, how was it being a woman of color at Georgetown? It was definitely... A unique experience and something that I really credit um, to Georgetown is that before I even started my freshman year over the summer, I was um, part of a program called the Community Scholars Program. And so they selected some people from my class who had similar backgrounds as I did. Um, so people who are also first generation college students 
um, who came from like lower middle income um, family backgrounds and um, were also um, people of color uh, for the most part. And so the idea was that we were there over the summer, I believe it was about six weeks, there were 50 of us and it was, the whole summer was focused on getting us acclimated to the Georgetown environment. Wow. So we took classes over the summer and we had a lot of workshops talking about how to use different resources um, that the school offered. And so I think that that was the type of support that I needed. Otherwise, I feel like if I just went in um, right in September without that background, I would have kind of felt like a fish just coming out of water, just like trying to figure out, navigate my way around, but also start trying to figure out like classes, the social scene and everything. So that was one last, last thing I had to worry about. But also like going back to the idea of like having a village to support me, I got, I was really, really blessed in that my freshman year, I met some really amazing best friends, all women of color, and we stayed best friends all throughout our four years at Georgetown. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how I would have made it without them. Honestly, they helped me through so many different phases um, that I went through throughout the four years at Georgetown. Of course, I was there to help them and support them too. But having that friend group and having those people I can lean on from the very first day that I got to Georgetown was something that really helped, especially since they were also women of color. And so it was, you know, as many people may know, like Georgetown is not necessarily the most diverse school. Um, and so just having those people that come from similar backgrounds it was something that really helped me um, throughout my journey.